Hi everyone, welcome back. If it's your first time, then hi, my name is Becca. Today we are talking all about fading pigmentation, calming redness, and maintaining radiant, glowy, healthy skin overall. I am starting with a bare face. Well, I'm actually doing the whole video with a bare face. I just have some brow gel and, and lip balm on because I wanna show you exactly what skin concerns I have right now and how I'm targeting them. I actually thought about this video because I had a huge cystic spot along my jawline, which is where I tend to get breakouts when I do get them. And for my skin type, and skin tone, I'm super pigmentation prone. So even though I'm a light medium skin type, my pigmentation gets really dark and it can get like purpley and red as well. And usually when I get a cystic spot, the pigmentation will stick around for months, like truly months. It's just really stubborn. And so these are things that I have learned over many, many years in terms of how to fade pigmentation, both in terms of how to treat it as well as how to prevent it. I'm going to show you what this spot looked like without makeup a week ago today. And I can't even tell you how significantly the routine that I'm using now has improved the rate of healing. Usually for me to get to where my skin was a week ago to this point, it would take weeks. And I'm showing you the footage because it's such a good case study in how well these products work when you stick to using them regularly. So let's talk about treatment first and specifically how I'm fading this spot. There are two hero products of this video and then everything else is kind of the supporting cast. And these are the two hero products. I've talked about them both before, I think, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in detail. So let's start with the Mother Science Molecular Hero Serum. You may have seen people talk about this. There's been a lot of buzz about this because it's been so effective for so many people I know with different skin types and different skin tones. So they feature an ingredient called malicezin, which is, well, they claim it's 10 times more effective than vitamin C at fading pigmentation. It also has niacinamide to help with brightening, and it also has antioxidants to help prevent oxidative stress that can be caused by the sun, free radicals, all of that. The texture itself is like a hydrate gel serum so it is actually quite hydrating even on its own let me just pump out a little bit for you so that's what it looks like it has this really light yellow color with a gel consistency and it sinks into the skin really nicely it's very hydrating it's not a super super dewy serum it actually does absorb and then it sets down on the skin. It doesn't leave any greasiness or emollients behind. They recommend using two pumps of this right after cleansing in the morning and in the evening. For me, I've actually been using this mostly in the morning because I want that antioxidant protection in addition with my SPF, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So I cleanse and I go in with this right away because I want this to have the first contact with my skin before any other skincare that I'm applying. I mentioned in my 2023 skincare that I kind of fell off of vitamin C for a little while, um, mostly because I was just really focusing on simplifying my skincare routines and I was getting antioxidant protection elsewhere. But I've also been using this and it's been giving me that antioxidant protection and it's just so effective at fading pigmentation. I can't even explain how quickly this is healing compared to how my skin usually is. For me, when I get cystic spots, it will obviously swell up under the skin. It's a node, it's like painful. And then it may or may not come to a white head. And then as it's healing, it turns bright red and then like a deeper purple or like a bluish color. And that is the tone that will stick around for a long time. What's been notable about my pigmentation here, as I've been using these two, is that the pigmentation, it did turn red as it does when it's healing, but the pigmentation is not turning as deep and dark of a blue tone or a blue purple tone as it usually does. So I feel like 
the pigmentation isn't setting in as intensely, so it's going to fade a lot more quickly. Another great thing about this is that it doesn't feel irritating or active on the skin at all. There's no tingling, there's no burning. It just actually feels really calming and hydrating, and it plays well with all of my other skincare. So in the morning, I just do this, and then maybe an essence, like a milky essence or a hydrating serum, and then moisturizer SPF. So it's like a pretty streamlined routine. You can use this twice a day. In fact, the brand recommends it for maximum results. I may actually switch over to twice a day because I haven't had any issues using these together, but for the last week, I've been using this in the morning and this in the evening. I will also say this is a high-end price point. This is $89 for one ounce. However, when I am looking at high-end serums, I'm looking for multitaskers, right? I don't want there to just be one active ingredient or one hero ingredient. I want this to be well-rounded. I want this to potentially take the place of maybe three or four single ingredient serums. And this definitely does that because it gives you the antioxidant protection, it targets pigmentation, fades pigmentation, and I also find that my skin tone feels really luminous and bright and even happy, healthy, all of that when I'm using this. So for me, it's worth it because it takes the place of multiple skincare steps. I don't even really need to go in with a hydrating serum again after this. So that's me in the morning. And then I've been combining this with Dr. Sam's Brightly Flawless Brightly Serum. This is a very different kind of product. The hero ingredient in this is a 10% azelaic acid. And I have to say, I finally understand the hype around azelaic acid. I've used other azelaic acid products in the past and I just haven't gotten the results or haven't enjoyed them long enough to stick with them, but this has given me very visible, very noticeable results. I think I mentioned this in my 2023 favorites. It's so good. So again, I mentioned a 10% azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is a powerhouse ingredient. It helps fade pigmentation. It also helps with calming redness. It helps prevent congestion in the skin. I definitely notice the fading of redness and the fading of pigmentation with this because of the azelaic acid. This also contains 5% niacinamide, so it has that brightening, again, pore clearing quality, and it will give you a really even glowy skin tone. And it has a 2% ascorbyl glucoside, which is a vitamin C derivative. So this will help brighten the skin, it will help boost collagen production in the skin as vitamin C does, and it will also give you antioxidant protection. And on top of all of that, it has a 1% Bakuchiol in it, which a lot of people like to compare it to retinoids. It's not the same function, but it does have a similar function in that it will help reduce visible signs of aging. This is actually formulated for AM use, but I've used it in the PM as well. I've used it in conjunction with my retinoids. I haven't had any issues with it, um, you can see why it's formulated as an AM serum because it gives you antioxidant protection, it gives you that niacinamide, it gives you that brightening, so it works well in conjunction with SPF, but obviously you can use it at any time. One thing to know about this texture is that it is a lotion-y cream texture. So it's not a gel, it comes out like this white cream. So when I apply this, I apply it right after cleansing, but I wanna make sure that my skin is completely dried off. Otherwise, like some lotions, when it's applied to wet skin, it can kind of streak and bunch up. But when it's applied to dry skin, it has a really nice gel cream quality to it. It's very thin, it sinks in really quickly, and then I wait for it to sink in before going in with other skincare. It has a very like silky matte dry down, so it's not going to be your moisturizer necessarily. I would go over this with another moisturizer, and then I would go over with SPF or just go over it with a night cream. Again, this is a high-end serum. It's $60 for one ounce. One ounce is standard for serums, but because it has so 
many ingredients in it and it's a multi-targeted treatment, I really don't mind. And I will also say I've been using it kind of off label almost as a mask sometimes. So before bed, I've actually been taking a little bit and applying just like a really thick layer <laughs> over it and using it almost as an overnight treatment. Um, in conjunction with whatever skincare I'm using. I don't think using more means you'll get better results, but for me it's more that I've wanted to make sure that the entire area is covered and targeted. And I've been having, again, incredible results with these together. If you can tolerate it, they work great together. Um, the only crossover ingredient here is niacinamide in both of these. So if you're sensitive to that, you may not wanna use these together. But other than that, I don't think there are any redundancies in the formulas and they've just been amazing. I can't even explain to you how good they've been for fading pigmentation. So those have been my two hero products for fading pigmentation. The other product that I would say has a strong supporting role is my LED mask. You guys know I've talked about this a bunch on my channel. It is a product I've been using for a very long time, several years. I have the current body one that's like a flexible LED. I've talked about it a bunch before. I do have a discount code for it um, because it is a higher price item, obviously. I think my code is Becca15 for 15% off. But what Red LED does is it helps expedite skin healing. It helps calm the skin. It has, you know, anti-aging, well-aging properties in terms of stimulating collagen. And because of all of that, in terms of like expediting skin healing, preventing greater pigmentation, fading redness, it's supporting my skin as it's doing the work to break down the pigmentation. And I also find that because of the skin healing more quickly, because of the red LED, the pigmentation isn't getting as dark or as kind of stubborn as it typically would. I use this every night after my PM skincare. Sometimes in the morning, if I can squeeze it in, I'll do this as well. But really, this trio has been incredible for fading pigmentation. So let's move into the like supporting cast of fading pigmentation, boosting brightness and radiance in the skin. I of course have to mention my retinoids. Um, I have a slightly more affordable one and then a high-end one that I still am loving so much. The affordable one is the Naturium Retinaldehyde 0.05%. I do have a whole video on my retinoid journey, my favorite retinols at different strengths. These are both higher strength retinaldehydes, which I would say are slightly more advanced. Um, but they're so well formulated that they're actually quite approachable and I have heard people say they've transitioned to using them without much irritation. So this is a gel cream and it um, comes out as this yellow color. That is the color of uh, retinol. And you can use this, it's hydrating actually on its own. Um, or you can use it in conjunction with a moisturizer on top. Our Retinoate is another example of a luxury product that targets multiple things. Retinoate is their patented version of retinol. They say it's eight times stronger than the typical retinol, but I haven't found any irritation with it. It's been really beautiful for brightening. It's recommended for AM and PM. I mostly use it in the PM. This also has vitamin C in it. It's a vitamin C derivative that's called, let's see if I can say it, tetrahexyl decal ascorbate. So this helps with brightening, it helps soften signs of aging, it will help boost collagen production, and then it also has hyaluronic acid, and it's also very moisturizing and super elegant on its own. These are all things that I absolutely would expect from a product at this price point. It's $182. It might be the most expensive thing I'm using right now in my routine, but ugh, it really does deliver. I'm so sorry to tell you this, but it's very, very good. But again, you don't need to spend a lot to get the effects of a retinoid. So I just wanna offer you products that are at a spectrum of price points. Another redness calmer is the NIOD Superoxide Dismutase Saccharide Mist. Um, I also mentioned this in my 2023 favorites. I try to be consistent with skincare when I can, even though I test a lot of stuff. This is a mist I use right after cleansing, and I don't know what it is about it or how it works, but I do find that my skin tone and redness is calmed a lot when I use this. I'm very redness prone, rosacea, dermatitis, all of that good stuff. Um, I also have been struggling with like a histamine disorder, I think that 
produces a lot of inflammation and redness in the skin. So finding ways to calm redness and subside redness is really important to me. So this mist has definitely been doing that as well as the LED mask. So those are all what I would include in my treatment category. They're either actively fading pigmentation or supporting the skin barrier, calming redness, softening signs of aging, improving skin turnover, all things that support the treatment of fading hyperpigmentation. And these are all things that produce glow in the skin. The next category of products is what I would file under prevention. So these are things that will prevent future blemishes from coming up and they will also prevent pigmentation from appearing or getting darker. To be honest, you could probably put the retinoids in the prevention category as well because they also help manage acne, blemishes, breakouts, all of that. But we all know retinol is kind of the do-it-all ingredient. For me, these two products are what I use to prevent future blemishes. They're both BHA products, and the reason why I love BHA as someone with oily, congestion-prone skin is that BHA is oil salt. So it will go down into your pores and help you control oil production, which will help you know, acne, it will help with congestion, it will help the appearance of blackheads. It will work on all of those levels to help prevent future breakouts. So these are two different strengths. This is 1% and this is 2%. Let's talk about the 1%. This is the Paula's Choice 1% BHA sensitive skin exfoliant. This contains 1% salicylic acid, which is the BHA, and then allantoin to help soothe and calm the skin. And I think it's really notable that this is in their calm line for all skin types. The reason why I love this is that when I just need a little bit of exfoliation, but I don't wanna do a full treatment at full strength, which is 2%, I can go in with this and I can even use it as sort of a targeted treatment treatment in my T-zone or around my nose. I also love the texture of this, so it comes in a pump. And then you get this gel consistency, and so it really stays where you put it. It's also hydrating in and of itself. It's unscented, it sinks into the skin, and I find that it doesn't interfere with other products. It's also easier to control because it is a stiffer formula like this gel. So if I just wanna do a targeted application, I can control exactly where I put it without maybe doing like an entire toner pad across my whole face. And because it's 1%, it's gentle enough for me to use with vitamin C, sometimes even with retinoids, if my skin can handle it. Um, that depends on your tolerance, but it's not quite as intense as the 2%. Then I have the Naturium um, BHA liquid exfoliant. By the way, I do have a Naturium discount code too. It's Becca15 if you are curious to try it. Um, this is the strongest uh, concentration of salicylic acid that's allowed over the counter. And this is a fluid texture. It comes um, out as a liquid. So I just take a cotton pad or a reusable skincare pad and I soak it and right after cleansing, I use this and kind of sweep it all across my face. Or I can keep it targeted if I'm using a little cotton pad around the nose or where I'm most congestion prone, including along the jawline. For me, these are essential because as much as I love my retinoids, as someone who's really congestion prone, I still need that oil soluble BHA to help prevent whiteheads and blackheads and congestion from forming. In fact, this spot was a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny, hardly even visible bump under the skin that I should have just treated with my BHA, but I didn't. I picked at it and then it got inflamed and then it turned into a cystic spot. So do as I say, not as I do. It would have taken more time, but it definitely would have helped. And usually I don't do that. I just got obsessive and I like picked at it. It was a whole mess. And the final category for prevention, of course, is SPF. The thing that I have to say is that none of these treatments for fading pigmentation work. You shouldn't even bother with them, actually, if you're not gonna use SPF because the treatments will make you photosensitive. So if you're using the treatments without SPF, you're actually making your skin more vulnerable to greater pigmentation and sun damage. You really don't want that to happen. So if you're going to use the treatments, use the SPF, please. 
please, please, please. I have a few that I'm loving and using. I'm still loving the Madagascar Centella Hayalu Water Fit Sun Serum SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. It's beautiful, it's elegant, it's a light, cream. It is hydrating. It sinks in really nicely. No white cast. It's a Korean SPF. All of that good stuff. This is also the time of year where I'm starting to think about using more water resistant sunscreens. Maybe you live in a warmer climate. You're anticipating your warmer vacations, being in the sun. So I have two waterproof or water resistant sunscreens. They call it waterproof. This is a Japanese one, but in the US it's water resistant. So this is my chemical one. This is the Kiss Me Mom me waterproof sunscreen SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. It's the UV aqua milk. It's a funny little name. It's very cute, but it's a great um, water resistant sunscreen because you can actually feel it setting down and creating a bit of a film so that it actually sticks on your skin. I was in Palm Springs a couple of weeks ago at this like cute little hot springs resort. It was amazing. I spent a lot of time in the water. So I was using this and again, it's a very lightweight texture, but as you rub it in, you can start to feel it sort of set down and create a film over the skin. It's not uncomfortable at all, it's totally sheer. And then it turns into this like silky matte texture. You can actually feel the texture change happening and that's what helps it stay water resistant. I do have a mineral option, it's one I've been loving. I'm still using this a ton still. It's the Isden Arafatona Ageless Ultra Light Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Isden is a Spanish brand, um, but they are available in the US. This is their tinted version, which I love, and they also have an untinted version. So if you're looking for mineral options, I highly recommend them. They put a ton of clinical testing behind their products, and this is a zinc oxide based SPF. Um, this shade is also a really good shade for me for a tint. So that's what it looks like. It has a nice golden undertone. It's actually the closest I've found in terms of a match for a mineral SPF, but they do have an untinted version as well. This is also water resistant up to 40 minutes, so definitely reapply, but it has a similar set down quality where it creates a film as it's setting down and it really binds to the skin. It's also great if you're like a very sweaty person. And the last thing I wanna mention is a, an SPF stick that I've really loved. I actually emptied two of these. This is the Round Around Green Tea Sika Mild Sun Stick. It's SPF 50 plus PA4 pluses. The thing about this that I love, which is unique from a lot of sun sticks, is that this is a chemical SPF. So a lot of sun sticks have zinc in them. They create that chalky feeling. This does not have that. It goes on thin, it's elegant, it's sheer, and it's also matte. So it's not greasy. It doesn't leave like that sticky finish on the skin. I'm very, very picky about sun sticks. And this is probably the, my favorite one I've ever tried. So I know they sell these in two packs on Yes Style. It's 12 bucks or something, so it's pretty affordable. It's a great way also, if you're on the go, to reapply SPF on your arms, on your hands. I keep one in my purse, especially for when I'm driving. I've also reapplied it over makeup carefully, um, or your neck or whatever. If you have kids that you have a hard time getting SPF on them, this can be helpful. I wouldn't recommend it in place of a really good liquid SPF application. For me, this is a supplemental product, but it's my favorite sun stick that I have tried. So I know that's a lot of stuff. Let me just review the order in which I use everything. So in the morning, I'll use my cleanser and then I'll go in with this mist. I'll let it set down. And then I go in with the Mother Science Molecular Hero Serum, or you could go in with the Dr. Sam Bunting um, Brightly Serum. Then I use a moisturizer and then I go in with an SPF, any of the ones that I've mentioned. In the evening, what I will do is I will cleanse and then I will mist again. Then I go in with the LED mask, just with the mist only. You want the LED mask to have direct contact with your skin, so you don't wanna have any occlusives that might prevent the red light from penetrating. So then after the mask is when I go in with my treatments. I would say use the BHA to treat congestion and do exfoliation to treat your pores, or use the Dr. Sam or the Mother Science for fading pigmentation, or use your retinoid. I would not say use all of these at the same time unless you know your skin can tolerate it, but generally, 
either the brighteners, the BHA, or the retinols will be sufficient to treat multiple concerns. And then if I want to, I'll go in with like a richer night cream or something like that. So I hope this was helpful. I hope I laid everything out for you in a way that's digestible. But if you have any questions about any of the products, let me know. I will also, of course, include the discount codes for anything I mentioned below. Um, no pressure to use them, just if you want to. And if you have any questions, I'll meet you in the comments and try to answer what I can. But I just have to say like this routine with these two products, nothing has helped prevent and fade and target pigmentation like these two have. So they're really the star of the show. So if you're on this skincare journey with me in terms of targeting pigmentation, boosting your radiance, good luck. If it's your first time here, then I would love for you to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.